right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from lovely San Diego. And today I am joined by Gail Lance, who is in Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> nice Southern doing, pronunciation. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. Just to, just to let the audience know, I did pronounce it Birmingham earlier, which is actually the English city. And being from Ireland, that's a more natural pronunciation um, of course. for me. Yeah. So um, Gail is the founder of Work Matters, a leadership expert, author, speaker, and trailblazer in her field. Um, you do, wrote the award-winning book, Taking the Bull by the Horns, and you're the creator of the leadership, uh, the leadership Journal, and you're launching a podcast this week, which is exciting. Yes, yes. I am Excellent. excited. Great. So what we want to talk about is um, rethinking the future organization. So, so Gail, why, I mean, obviously there's been a lot of upheaval recently and, and uh, you know, so people have been forced in some way to, to rethink their organizations. But I think a lot of them are thinking about it probably in the short term thinking, okay, I just have to reconfigure things now and then everything will get back to normal and I can just go back to the old ways. But uh, but why, is it, why should they start thinking or rethinking their organization in a more, you know, in a more expansive way, in a more future forward way? Um, because we, we're actually moving into a new paradigm. Mm -hmm. And so it's only natural to go back to what you've always known. But for your organization to be competitive, uh, to stand out, you're really going to have to do radically different kinds of thinking to, to move forward. So I think part of it is just habit in terms of going mm -hmm. back, but to answer your question, the importance of doing that is really to make sure that you can continue to be in the lead or, or compete most effectively going forward. Yeah. So what is the, what is, from your point of view, what is the paradigm shift that we're starting to see? Um, I think that the new ways of operating are, are hard to imagine. So that the paradigm looks different for different kinds of industries, different kinds mm -hmm. of organizations, but it's almost as though you can start with a clean slate in many respects and rethink what is our business really about now? What is it that is the, the true value that we can or want to create now? So I think that the, the shift is requiring that you ask more fundamental questions and not just rely on more iterative kinds of change that organizations are used to making typically. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. And I mean, I think this is, this is the time for, for fundamental change and fundamentally revisiting how your organization is, is structured and how it operates. And the, the options for many industries, obviously there, there are some people who, you know, they, they have a narrow set of, of ways they can configure their organization given whatever industry or whatever product or service they, they produce. But for a lot of organizations, especially those uh, that are knowledge-based, um, the configuration options are, are, are almost endless. Absolutely. That, to me, there's so much opportunity for knowledge-based organizations because there's so many different ways to, to help serve different markets. So, you know, one of the areas in which I'm spending a lot of time with the, um, the CEOs and the executives that I'm working with is really identifying opportunities and challenging the mindset to, to mm -hmm. say, this is actually something where there's, there's something positive here that we can search for and sniff out. And so those are the organizations that I think will do really well to, to see that this is truly an, a, a time for opportunity, not to be yeah. uh, fear-based in their thinking. No, and and in many ways, uh, there's now your you have access to so much talent out there, and 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 if you start to think a little bit more um, creatively, and configure your business in that way, you know you have an almost uh, endless talent pool as opposed to restricting yourself to locations and physical building all of this stuff. I mean, you can really create. Plus, you have talent across the globe as well. Yes, absolutely. In fact, um, a lot of organizations tend to, to focus on what should we do now? It's a natural instinct. What should we be mm -hmm. doing? And to help them uh, begin to ask different questions and challenge how they're thinking about everything, talent, uh, the value creation is, is wonderful. There's, there is so much talent. Um, my son is actually in the job market now and uh, is looking at all kinds mm -hmm. of possibilities and trying to navigate that new 
new way of uh, being, being engaged with companies as opposed to traditional methods. So there's a lot of hidden talent out there, I think, that, that companies can tap and they'll have to find creative ways to do that. And now, of course, I mean, um, you know, take, a, for example, your son now, of course, um, doesn't necessarily have to make a decision to stay in one place or be somewhere or move or whatever. You know, there is the option to look at opportunities, um, you know, where he could work virtually or, or whatever. Exactly. And he's an entrepreneurial spirit. So it's kind of fun mm -hmm. for him to be playing around with all these different opportunities and ideas that he's thinking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but obviously, sure. in order, and obviously, in order to take advantage of this, then organizations, need, as you said, they need to change their change their thinking, and and uh, and re and reconfigure how they operate as a business. But this is a, this is very challenging, as we as we've said, for a lot of companies because there is that instinct just to stick with what they know, or this hankering to get back to the way things were. Yes. Well, and one of the ways to, to help organizations move through that is uh, an idea called future proofing, mm -hmm. where you really do, you, you pre-solve future problems, where you don't just try to look at what the problem is for the day. For example, a lot of companies are, are struggling to figure out how to get their employees to wear masks. Right. Well, they've, a lot are figuring that out. And so employees are being compliant and they're wearing masks masks, but it's created a whole other problem with morale. You know, mm -hmm. employees don't like it and they're frustrated. So that's, that's a problem that's creating another problem, which then creates another problem that's probably going to require more leadership engagement. If you have a mm -hmm. morale issue, then leaders will have to step up, right? And engage to yeah. make sure that, that they're interacting with employees differently. So you can't just be thinking about what is the immediate problem that we need to solve, but to really anticipate a, a few levels out, what is that going to be uh, yeah, generating? And, and, and that's an interesting point is uh, because obviously, yeah, obviously people are, are relatively happy to be compliant and help and, and all of that. Um, but as you say, the longer it goes on, the more frustrated um, they get, the more they start to think about, well, you know, is this really what I want? Do I want to be here like this every day? And that, and so to your point, um, there has to be a greater level of communication and engagement on behalf of the leadership. Yes. And, and they're finding different ways to do that. I just had a CEO roundtable group uh, conversation this morning. And one of the ways that uh, one of the executives is approaching that is just to do random reach outs, not even scheduled mm -hmm. calls, but just randomly talking to employees to keep a pulse on what's going on and to understand what's going on in the organization. So there are a lot of different ways that, that executives can, can meet that need. Yeah. And I think at a, at a time like this, and, and then anytime you're going through any level of, of change or reconfiguration, then over communicating is key. And to say, it's like, even when you don't think you have anything to say is like more communication because people just tend to, in the absence of communication, they fill in the dots themselves. That's true. But I, I throw out one caution too, because mm -hmm. as important as it is to over communicate, I see some, some organizations putting out videos and webinars and it's, it's a lot of outbound communication to mm -hmm. make sure that employees are clear about what's sure. happening, but there also needs to be a lot of listening and uh, finding ways to make sure that, you know, we spoke about talent before, really leveraging the talent. What are employees seeing, thinking, uh, what ideas can they contribute and finding some, some means to, to garner that, that knowledge base and um, energy so that it, it really needs to be kind of a two-way um, exchange and not just feeling like you have to keep dumping out all of this, all of this information to no, employees. No, a hundred percent and, and not that you said, were implying that yeah. no 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 i know but i mean um a hundred percent agree and then obviously if you are going to you know build the organization of the future um the people who work with you today and your employees they have great ideas too about you know how it can be weaker so it does need to be you do need to if you like crowdsource the collective wisdom of your organization yes and I really like the small group dynamic. It's, it's a, mm -hmm. I've run small groups for many years and I believe in the power of that and the ability to get things done and to push things forward faster with small groups. So I'm also encouraging a lot of my clients to find ways to, to create little pockets within their organizations of people who care about issues and who can put their heads together 
and uh, come out the other side with some concrete solutions and plans in different areas. So it's different than traditional strategic planning sessions mm -hmm. that might happen once a year or big group right. town hall meetings. The, 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 the smaller the groupings, I think sometimes the better in terms of getting some traction to move forward. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. And to, and to some degree, I think those big yearly like strategic planning stuff, I mean, it has its place, but its place, I think, has diminished a lot because I think that we live in such a dynamic time is that what you're talking about is, you know, this kind of continuous improvement or small group thinking, making impacts in certain areas. There's, there's much more power to that kind of fluid rolling, um, you know, um, creative thinking and, and, and working than there is sort of the traditional like big strategic plan and then, you know, the rest of the yes. year is the rest of the year. Yes, yes, start small, move fast. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So um, what are some of the, what are some of the, uh, the companies that you were, what are some of the examples that you can give of people who are really kind of creating new ways of operating or new structures? Obviously you don't need to name the companies, but like the, just the concepts. Yeah, well, I think the, the, the smart ones are devoting some time to visioning, even if it's mm -hmm. a short term vision um, compared to other organizations that I see that are doing more uh, current troubleshooting. The, mm -hmm. the more visionary leaders that I'm working with are devoting some time and energy to, to really trying to think through what could at least a short term vision look like for us. So that's one thing that sets them apart. Um, as I mentioned, they're tapping talent strategically to try to uh, bring in new ideas from people who have natural strengths in an area. For example, there's some people who, who are naturally more creative thinkers or who enjoy mm -hmm. thinking more futur futuristically. There are other employees who are great at uh, more of the, the detailed kinds of work and putting plans together. So this is a time when the, the best leaders that I see are working harder to make sure that they are aligning the talent with what the, the needs, kind of what the world is calling for now. So those are a couple of things that they're doing. They're also checking in more regularly. It's harder to track progress sometimes in this environment. So they're developing some, some new ways to check in and make sure that they're moving the needle uh, that people know that a lot of people are working from home, so it's easy to, uh, to, to think that they're off the radar or for them to think that they're off the radar. So they're, they're working hard to make sure that they've got clear measures of success and that right. uh, employees are aware of what those measures are right. and are taking action to, to meet them. Yeah, no, I think that's, I, th I think those are great points. And I think, yeah, when, when, when people are virtual remote and we've worked, we've um, operated a virtual organization for many, many years, we, we made a strategic decision uh, to do so largely virtual. We do have a development center of programmers. Um, but one of the things that we certainly found is, yes, you got to set expectations, you got to set measurements. And then sometimes you have to reconfigure, uh, you know, how you operate in order to accommodate, you know, people in different places, and maybe people with different circumstances. So I think it requires, as you say, it requires, it requires putting the infrastructure in place, setting the expectations, um, having good measurements, and then a certain level of maybe flexibility that organizations aren't used to. Yes, they know they need to be flexible, mm -hmm. but it is a struggle for many people, mm -hmm. especially those that are used to working a plan or, or having a sense of control. What is it that, that mm -hmm. they say? You, you haven't lost control. You've just uh, you've lost the illusion that you've had control now. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's I think a lot of, of executives are having to kind of surrender to, to that idea that we can't control everything. Mm -hmm. And it's a real opportunity. I'm always the optimist, but to, to build kind of that internal resilience and, and mindset that leaders need to have to be most effective during these difficult times. Oh yeah, for sure. And I think the other thing too is that organizations are discovering that uh, there was a lot of lip service being paid to digital processes um, because when times are good, you say, yeah, I'll get around to that. And you know, you'll put up with certain amount of inefficiency or manual processes. They're now discovering that in order to operate in this new world, you need to have really good digital processes and actually, you know, focus in on, on getting them and getting them in place and, and efficient. Yes, and being clear on priorities, uh, mm -hmm. revisiting priorities more than you would ordinarily because they change so quickly. Uh, some of the groups that I meet with regular, regularly on a monthly basis now want to meet every other week 
because the environment is such that it's just requiring so much change and thinking and adjusting and it helps to stay in connection uh, more frequently. So. Yeah, I mean, I think that's an excellent point about reprioritizing because um, because when something was a priority, there tends to be that assumption that it's still a priority, and and you have to reprioritize those things. And it's also it's it's that it's also that psychological thing is, you know, when you do planning with people, or you know, you do as we talked about your yearly strategic plan is you say, okay, what do we need to do this year? What are these things we need to do this year? Everybody's got loads of ideas. And then you say, okay, what do we need to stop doing? And there's silence. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> I know. And that's what's so interesting is, uh, you know, some of the one-on-one the -on -one executives I'm working with, uh, we, we may have had goals established in, in January and they circle mm -hmm. back and they say, well, Gail, I, I feel terrible. I, I've not been able to focus on what I said. Yeah. And, I would, and I say, you have permission not to, like I said, let's start with a clean slate here. This is not how things are going to be, you know, we're not returning to where we were. So let's start fresh and regroup and, and not judge that. That is probably mm -hmm. one of the biggest challenges that I see is people judging themselves when they really need to be uh, kinder right now yeah. or, or uh, giving themselves a break because everyone's trying to think through things differently. This is a time to experiment and to mm -hmm. allow yourself to, to take a little more risk, but to not feel like you have to stick to a rigid uh, goal setting kind of uh, plan that was set up months ago. It really doesn't matter at this point. Yeah, and I think that's a great advice, not just for, for business, but also in, in, in personal lives, because I think it's been a time when people have sort of started to reflect on, you know, on how their own lives are, are, are configured. But I think it, it, it is a great point because, yeah, I mean, things have changed. So I think you have to, you have to be ready to, to pivot, not to like just react and like run in any, you know, any which way direction, but, but be ready to pivot. And as you said, uh, like to be kind to yourself and say, okay, yeah, the business has changed. The landscape has changed. The, um, maybe we have to move a little bit over here, maybe into an adjacent market. Maybe we need to reconfigure our, our offerings. Uh, maybe we need to fundamentally rethink uh, the whole business concept that we have, whatever it is, it's okay. It's okay to do that. Exactly. I was amazed yesterday in conversation, a CEO of a, about a $25 million business that has just, it's, it's been sinking and he, mm -hmm. he's gone through all kinds of, of grief uh -huh. and anger and all of that. And, but it was amazing to see just how at peace he is at this point about this. There's a reason for this and this is helping me discern what I want to do next and the key is focusing on the strength and capability that you have, not on what you've lost, because mm -hmm. that's really what's going to carry you forward. And to know that he was able to scale a business over just a few years to that size is, is an accomplishment. But to be able to, to be at peace with letting it go and saying, what's next? Because I know I've got it within me to build something yeah. else. That's ideally where you want to be. And I haven't heard uh, a lot of executives uh, be there quite yet but it was it was yeah. impressive to hear him yeah i mean it is i mean and as we know i mean it is it's a difficult thing because apparently it particularly like i mean if your business has been severely impacted by the pandemic i mean it's not something you created it came out of left field there's nothing you could do about it so i guess there is a kind of there is a few like there's a grieving process you need to go through but you need to go through it pretty quickly <laughs> Ideally, right. But yeah, it's, it's, it, this has definitely exposed a lot of vulnerabilities that businesses have, mm -hmm. uh, improvements they want to make. But again, it goes back to the thinking. You know, it's not yeah. a, the question, the first question shouldn't be, what should we do now? The first question should, should be, what should we be thinking now? Mm -hmm. And, you know, going back to, you know, what's shifting in the paradigm and how to figure that all out, I really think that that's one of the most powerful questions. Yeah, that no, that's to be asking. Yeah, no, and I think that's an excellent point um, to finish up on because, yes, the natural inclination is to do, you know, whenever anything happens, it's like, you know, people love to do things, get active, get busy, but absent the thinking, um, you know, yeah, you'll get a lot of things done, but it may not actually help you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Well, um, listen, before we go, Gail, uh, all of Gail's information, being a contributor bio, all the links and everything, but before we go, please do tell people a bit more about yourself, your organization, how they can find out more. 
Oh, sure. Well, um, my business is workmatters.com, a leadership consulting firm. So you can find more information there. We typically work with CEOs and senior executives who want to transform their organizations in record time. So there's been a lot of activity lately and interest. Um, and the, uh, the podcast that I mentioned that's launching is called CEO on the go podcast. Dot com. So that's my grand experiment, John, but I'm mm. coming out of the gate this week. Uh, today is my birthday. So I thought what better ah. day to launch. And so, uh, yeah, so they can look up CEO on the go podcast.com or uh, workmatters.com for more information. Well, that's fantastic. Well, listen, happy birthday. Uh, Thank you. I feel like I feel like I should have sent you a virtual cake or something. But uh, Oh, that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. I'll save, I'll save the calories. But no, I just think it's a good good week to be in touch with people like you and others and try to Absolutely. get good, good information out there. Well, best of luck with CEO on the go, CEO on the go.com. So I encourage everybody to, to check that out. And uh, cause this is a time uh, when, you know, something, this is the best time right now is to take as many inputs as you can and to really educate and inform yourself because there are, yeah, there's a lot of challenges ahead, but there's a huge amount of opportunity too. And it's a great yes. time to like get the best information and help you can. Yes. And just quick correction is CEO yeah. on the go podcast.com. Oh, sorry. CEO on the go podcast.com podcast. and we will yes. have it and we will have it in the contributor bio. So you'll just have to click on the link. Just click. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Well, listen, thanks a lot, Gail. My name is John thanks, Golden, John. Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeline CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Bye.